Hey everyone, welcome back. We're building a cultist today. Last video we painted up a cultist. The uh, first instalment of this grunge hammer that we are doing. So this will be instalment two, so grunge hammer the second. We are going to take some random crap out of a uh, bits box and put together a cultist. And I'm going to talk through a little bit what I'm thinking, or where my mind is going, what I'm... Uh, grabbing random bits out of this bits box and uh, planning out how to put it together. And uh, also in the end I'm going to show you how to make everything fit together quite easily. Originally this was going to be a painting video where I'd first uh, go through the cultists I built and select one of them. But uh, I quickly realized that none of the ones I had were really finished and if I was going to do a video on grabbing and painting a cultist, I can't do, you know, adding a few things to it and then painting it. I'd rather make it the whole thing about building one, so I can really focus and hone in on uh, why I picked the bits I do and how it turned out the way it did, you know? I uh, have this little nice uh, snotling crow's nest for uh, from the Ogre Kingdom's uh, sprue for one fancy. It's a really nice little roost, but I don't think it was right for this project. Flagellant body from the old Empire Flagellant kit. Fantastic uh, base for conversions. These are... I don't know what these are. I have these little plastic balls that are probably very cheap and I probably picked up at some point because I thought they'd be useful. I've never used them in a project, but, you know, uh, these things are good to hold on to. You never know when you need them. You might be able to use them for bubbles in a uh, pool of lava or vat of acid or something at some point. Anyway, I eventually settled on the flagellant body because it's a, a good base for a mini like this. I uh, looked through a bit more, found a uh, chaos symbol I liked that I thought I'd put in his back, and then I started looking for arms and weapons. Now, uh, at this point in the project, having used up a lot of my stuff already, there'll be short bits, to be honest. Especially arms. Arms holding weapons are a, uh, a big bottleneck. But I have a few. Uh, I try not to think too much about rules and uh, like what you see is what you get. Because in the end, you know, my house rules and stuff will just make them backliners and say that they are what they are, because I'm not going to be playing in tournaments with these boys. Uh, in general, you know, when convert converting, don't don't hold back too much. It's nothing worse for creativity than uh, trying to think about rules and stuff at the same time. So I was thinking about this uh, bearded head with this rat arm from a uh, Skaven Night Runner skit. But, uh, didn't go with that arm at the end. It stuck around. But yeah, some, some nice heads, you know, might put some trophies on them. So I was thinking, it could be a fun one. The, uh, the idea with the Skaven arm there was maybe I could take a lighter or a hot cup of water and uh, shape, bend the fingers around the gun, for example. But in the end, I wound up not going with that. Might show it off another time. Those uh, old Skaven arms are fantastic for conversions. I considered hanging some heads off the Chaos Symbol, but in the end, uh, that Chaos Symbol looks really good. It is, it's from the new Chaos Space Marines kit, which is a fantastic kit for bits. I considered if I should make him a uh, Icon Bearer, which again, I have a few, and I decided to opt against it in the end because. Again, like I have too many, too many standard bearers in my chaos army, which isn't necessarily a problem. But I figure I'll wait. I'll build a few other roles within the army. Have these lovely chainsaw bayonets from Anvil Industries again. Very good bits. Also, I have a few bits in there that I think I do believe are from. The old Forge World Renegades kit, one of my favourite kits. I'm very sad that it discontinued that. Uh, so going through heads, uh, eventually found this one with its uh, 
eyes covered by cloth. It's, he's tied about around his head, or he or she. No. Uh, and decided that was definitely an option. I, I like that one. I took out a rounded base thinking, oh, I'll move him over to that, but there's really no point until he's, uh, until it's time to base him. Uh, oh, uh, don't, don't look, that, that's unimportant. <laughs> I, I know these things, I know that's what we're made of. Anyway, so, go through the bits again, you know, found a gun with bayonet for, eh, maybe, but, I wanted this guy at this point to look savage, but really, really fanatically loyal to Chaos. So, consider a bit if I should carve out a bit of his back so I could fit that ghoul arm in, have his uh, um, back exposed a bit, but I opted against it. Now, he also, he, he also had a really fun idea that I wish I'd have gone with, but I wound up um, rejecting in the end. I was considering if I could use this leftover kind of metal ring looking thing. Oh, uh, I guess it's a radar of some sort. Or antenna. Antenna is what I'm looking for. This antenna from a uh, Imperial Guard Voxcaster. I was wondering if I could put it anywhere, like to hang something from, uh, you know, from around his neck or have it as a base for a shoulder pad or something on his arm. And I keep trying to integrate this throughout the build, but I never find a good place for it in the end. But I'm going to keep it in mind for the next cultist, because uh, it's a fun idea. It's uh, wacky. And wacky is good when you're trying to make the crazed followers of the Dark Gods. So at this point I rejected the Skaven arm and decided to just look for the other arm for that rifle and realized I was being too aggressive digging around in this resin. So calm down in a moment and a little bit more careful. Now, uh, next video after this one uh, will either be a, a few more targeted painting tips for how to paint models uh, much like I paint them for Grand Chama. If you want to paint along at home. Ah, of course I went over to the old uh, Dark Age uh, currents. Uh, Dark Age Irish Warriors kit and got a little ram's head, well, ram's skull, and I got a real, like, bright idea there. So, kind of considered that little uh, shrine, but decided I'm going to keep that for someone else. Perhaps even for a loyalist. Loyalists, by the way, in the Grand Shammer thing, are something we're going to have to have a long video talking about because, oh boy. Have I done too much thinking on that subject? Now, having found all the parts I wanted to use, uh, having <laughs> again considered the Skaven arm because I couldn't find the correct arm, I uh, started to uh, fiddle about with uh, getting everything dry fitted together. See if everything would fit, if everything would mesh nicely. So. That arm would fit through the hoop on the Voxcaster antenna. But where problems arrived was when I realized this last gun, as you can't see, has a hand attached to it at the front, and I'd have to carve that hand off. Oh god, yeah, I'm not doing a great job holding the model in front of the camera here, but yeah. So I continue looking for bits. I, I do eventually find an arm for that last gun, which is good. Yeah, right there. It's right in front of my bloody eyes. So, uh, drive it, check if it looks like the arms are lining up, and they were. I assume they uh, belong together, because once upon a time, I kept all these uh, last guns on little bits of masking tape with the correct arms together. Then I built an army of cultists and everything turned to chaos, but a few things, a few things still remain ordered and reasonable, logical. I decided I wanted him to have a bipod on his rifle, for no other reason than that. Like, there's something fitting about rebels with 
bipods, even if they're the uh, majority force, I feel like uh, just maybe it's because they can't afford the same kind of heavy support weapons, so they just put bipods on regular rifles to be able to offer more support. Maybe it's because they've stolen bipods from the enemy and, uh, you know, are just using whatever they can get their hands on, you know, to the victor, to the victor go the spoils, as they say. Or maybe it's just coincidence. But uh, I decided this guy has uh, either stolen or been given a bipod for use with his last gun. Uh, in the end, the last gun wound up having a ram's head kind of uh, mounted on the front as well. So I figure it's that he's uh, special in some way. Maybe he's the leader of a squad. Maybe he's just touched by chaos. Either way. I uh, think it looks good, and that's the most important thing. So, uh, attaching the head, the previous head this fleshless body had on it seems to have needed to have been uh, green stuffed in place, so there were, there's a little bit of a joint issue, so to speak. So I had to quickly file down either end. I don't know why I put glue on before filing this bit, but I filed this bit as well. So uh, let's try to get the most of the gunk out and upset the surface a bit so that the plastic glue or plastic cement will be able to uh, get through and create a seam. Put the ball, put the head on, and at this point, immediately I knew I was uh, heading in the right direction. Now, as always with plastic glue, you want to hold on to the, the bits until they've joined. Uh, and after they've uh, stopped, you know, moving around and slipping around, you have a weak bond for maybe 10 15 minutes, and then it goes rock hard after 15 plus minutes. Uh, don't worry too much about when. Just l let go of the join as soon as it stops sliding off, and then you can kind of adjust it a bit for the next 10 minutes. A very forgiving material. Now, for attaching this bit, I uh, had a bit of a deliberation, because I've uh, given a lot of my cultists little backpacks and uh, rucksacks and stuff, which is okay, because, you know, they, they don't have the same amount of supply, as you, presumably, and they don't. They're not as well equipped, so they probably carry more of their own stuff with them. Wouldn't risk leaving as much in base if you're a chaos cultist or uh, insurrectionist. So I decided against it for this guy. So I just attach this straight to the pack and then add a little, tiny little bit of uh, gear beneath it. And I kind of at this point, he really started to come together as some kind of, uh, you know, anointed. Uh, a lesser champion, so to speak, of chaos. A, uh, an, among the rebels and cultists, he's, you know, an icon. On, on, a, on a small scale, you know, not like a space marine or a magician, but among his brethren, he's a uh, symbol of respect and uh, pride. Seal, I guess, a symbol of seal. So, he charges in and everyone else follows. He shouts the praise of chaos and the others feel reinvigorated in the course. So it's just a case of waiting till the glue starts to bond, as I mentioned before, and moving it around a bit till it looks, lo looks right. And I love the dynamic pose this guy is getting. He really looks like he's diving into combat. Fortunately, in the end, the model wound up a bit uh, weighted forward, so he's kind of... Uh, a bit wobbly when he stands on a flat surface, but that's okay. All you have to do is attach something heavy to the back of the base or the underside of the back of the base. In my case, I'm probably going to look for a bit of rock or metal I can glue in underneath the base because he's not going to have the biggest base in the end. And on that note, he's not going to be on a square base, which will also help with stability. So at this point I was trying to decide how to uh, attach the ram's head. Oh well, attach the rifle to start with, but the ram's head was in my mind already 
cleaning off the uh, mold lines, the cadian bits, and in the meantime, considering where things are going to go. And also, how to attach the round set. That wound up being uh, quite a conundrum. Because there were no obvious connection points between the two. There was uh, a stone that was a like, small invisible ball joint between the two where nothing would attach, and I just couldn't glue it on. But you'll see that in a moment, so trying to find a good place to place the skull. Trying to decide where to put the skull on, I, uh, I, I thought it would look cool if uh, half the barrel was visible underneath the round skull, but that in the end didn't really work out. So uh, I cut the barrel in half, leaving a little bit more underneath. Then I cleaned up the ram skull, which is a very hard word to say, ram skull. At least we say it a lot of times in a row. Ram skull, ram skull, ram skull. Try it. Write it in the chat below. I'll see how you got on. A bit of glue on the barrel. And this is where the problems began. Oh dear. So, uh, it looked cool, but there was a very, very obvious groove between the two, and the skull wasn't really attached. So, I uh, put it down and let it dry a bit, had a look at it, tried to tell myself I really liked it, but in the end, it just didn't look good, as you can see. It, it, oh, and then the skull didn't want to stay on the table because it nearly fell off, and I'm very glad it didn't because that kind of tiny detail really does get lost easily on the floor. It... Instead, I cut the rest of the barrel off and tried to glue the skull on just uh, right on, and there was just no connection point whatsoever. No parts of plastic were touching each other in a way that would create a bond. So, brought out the most ancient and honourable tool of our people, the pin vise. And they began drilling carefully a small indent, a little guide hole for the pin vise to follow. So, just pushing it against and uh, starting to drill and guiding it in the right direction. And there we go. Now I have a good guide which the pin will go into. So I drilled a hole into the barrel. Ah. <laughs> so I drilled a hole into the barrel. <laughs> Again. Uh, went as deep as I felt I could go before I started to uh, face a lot of resistance. You don't want to go too deep into plastic like this. As much as it usually won't hurt it, I have seen cases where the inside gets warped and you wind up uh, twisting a whole piece or causing a crack within the plastic that becomes apparent later. Stuff like that. So, you know, take care when drilling into plastic. Uh, this is probably more of a problem if you're using an electric one. So for the advanced head, I was just trying desperately to drill a little bit to get a bit of conformity in the uh, connection point. In the end, I didn't manage to get very far, but I got, got a little bit going. Now, the skull is still not super well attached. Uh, the day after I made this video, I had to go in and glue it a bit extra, because I've uh, base coated the boy, and I noticed the skull was just not attached at all. But yeah, so what I do is I grab a bit of, of steel wire, or iron wire, I think, in this case. And I stick it in the hole with a bit of uh, plastic glue on it. Normally I would use super glue, but as mentioned, I own none of the none of the sort at the moment. Now, I, I do realise now, while I'm talking, that I could have used a bit of plastic rod, because I have a bit of that, and I would probably have bonded better. But it worked out in the end. It is attached now. So, hindsight is twenty twenty. Q 
gluing the metal rod into the barrel off camera because, again, I uh, still haven't quite figured that out apparently. And with that little metal wire in there, I put a bit of glue on both the end of the wire and into the ram's skull, and it forms a fair bond already, but just not strong enough for in the long run. And it looks really cool, doesn't it? Look at that. There's no like obvious place for the laser to come out, but I figure it's the nostrils, just because that's what the cool thing would be. And uh, everything doesn't have to make sense, as mentioned before. It's uh, a crazy magic sci-fi land, so so a flashy, heavily de like heavily modified last gun for our anointed of chaos. So at this point, it's time to glue the arms on, and also just start to consider how to deal with a few of the gaps and uh, strange connection points we have on the model. So uh, first and foremost, push the arm on, get a bond, and it doesn't really matter if the angle's right yet, as I'm going to show in a moment. Because it takes a while for the plastic glue to set properly. The plastic glue is a cement which smelts both ends of uh, the bit you're trying to glue, or it it melts any polyurethane plastic that it touches and fuses it together when it dries. Simply as an effect of two bits of uh, molten plastic meeting. Now uh, I, I glued it on the wrong way around, twisted it around to see if it would meet up, and it did. And then added, took it back off, uh, sorted out the hand joint, and glued it back on. Uh, now because the glue acts the way it does, as I just described. It's still wet on both ends, so sticking it back on, like I already did before, so at the wrong angle, and then pushing it around, or twisting it around, till it meets up where I want it to be. There you go. Good little, tri little tip for you. And there you go. Isn't he just cool? God, I'm really happy with that guy. However, his back severely lacking in detail. He looks uh, front-heavy, and he was front-heavy at this point, <laughs> as you can see. But uh, other than looking and feeling front-heavy, he was also missing detail on the back. So I mixed up some green stuff. As usual, a bit of blue, a bit of green, and twist it together. Smudge it around between your fingers. As soon as that's done, I started adding it to the, to the back of the model. I uh, decided to put it on like a little mount of some kind, a little uh, mixed backpack and uh, maybe like, uh, what are they called? Like a sacrifice sack, sacrifice satchel, in which you place uh, a sacrificed being or uh, some sacrificed uh, materials to the gods. So anyway, I uh, shaped that as a little bag, a little satchel, I add some uh, grooves to it later, so by making a couple of incisions a slight distance in. Obviously all of this is out of focus, but that's fine. So this was a whole lot of poking and prodding and cutting and fixing. And in the end, we wound up with something looking a bit like this. I was going to add a bit of uh, green stuff underneath, it's a little cube. I unfortunately dropped that, <laughs> it disappeared down onto the floor. I never found it, and still haven't found it to this day. This was filmed uh, two or three days ago, so... Yeah, instead I cut out a bit of plastic sprue and glued that on underneath. After filing it down and making sure it will fit in properly. Having added that in, then went ahead and uh, sorted out the green stuff a bit more so it would uh, look like it overlapped or attached to the little block underneath. Because this block wasn't really going to be seen later on, 
beyond from the sides, and I just wanted it to look like a bit of uh, storage or just material or resources he was carrying on his back. And uh, over that, I glued this lovely piece of parchment that I picked out earlier. I tried to angle it so it was flowing at the same kind of uh, impetus as the cloaks behind him. And uh, the connection still isn't great on it. Uh, last time I felt it, it still wobbled slightly, so we'll see if that uh, <laughs> manages to stick on or if we'll have to revisit that later. But that's the guy! Fully put together. Really happy how he's turned out. Really looking forward to painting him up for you guys. And uh, that was the second installment of Crunch Hammer. Um, hope you liked it. Uh, leave some comments below. If you enjoyed it and feel inspired to build your own Grand Channel models, why not leave a like and a comment and a subscribe and I will answer every comment, because, I mean, you're here. Yeah, see ya, have a good time. Thanks for watching.